Support for LAist comes from Japan House Los Angeles, presenting the free exhibition Pokemon Meets Koge. Experience the world of Pokemon through the ingenuity of Japanese artists working in traditional and contemporary crafts. More info at japanhousela.com. Support for LAist comes from the Soraya at Cal State Northridge, presenting the world premiere of Diavolo's Existencia, January 17th and 19th. Using aerial dance and architecture, Diavolo and the Soraya join forces to commemorate 30 years since the Northridge earthquake. More at thesoraya.org. LAist Studios. Today on the LA Report, California prepares to open Medi-Cal coverage to immigrants without legal status. We have tips on how to keep your pets safe this holiday season and looking for something to do with the family today. Well, how about whale watching? We'll tell you where you can do that. Good morning. It's Monday, December 25th. I'm Julia Paskin in for Suzanne Watley, and you're listening to the LA Report from LAist 89.3. It's a very Southern California Christmas day with clear skies and temperatures around 70 degrees. Celebrations are being held all around town from Christmas Mass at the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels in downtown L.A. to the Hollywood Interfaith Coalition's annual Christmas dinner. The holidays are a special time of year to gather with friends, loved ones, and even our furry friends. But sometimes we can get carried away with the festivities and forget about the safety of our pets. Kevin McManus with Pasadena Humane Society says keep a close eye on Fido and Felix. Well, it's an exciting time for us with people coming over, family get-togethers. Be really hyper-aware of your pet, especially if they are nervous with new people or have a tendency to try to dash out the door. If your pet is an escape artist, make sure that they are wearing a collar with a tag or check if the information on their microchip is up to date. For more tips on pet safety, LAist.com. A recently approved development called District NoHo will bring 1,500 housing units to North Hollywood. A quarter of them will be low-income units, but UCLA housing expert Shane Phillips says even market rate units will bring housing relief to the area. The people who move into those homes will mostly already live in the Los Angeles area, and so they're going to be leaving behind some home somewhere else that is, in most cases, more affordable than the one they're moving into. The project also includes a transit hub and open public space. Construction may start next year. Go to LAist.com to learn more. California has set several ambitious goals to stop or slow climate change. Most important is the ban on new gasoline-powered cars by 2035. But big oil still has major power in Sacramento, says Ryan Sabalo, who is with our content partner, CalMatters. We were able to find 21 bills that the oil industry opposed. Governor Newsom signed only seven of those. And we did an analysis on the bills. And one of the things we found was about half the time, those same bills were opposed by the state's very influential uh, construction and building trades council. Brian says lobbying from oil companies and construction groups led Governor Newsom to water down a plan for windfall tax. Instead, the governor opted to create a watchdog unit, but that could take years to set up. Starting January 1st, all immigrants without legal status may for the first time qualify for Medi-Cal, California's health care program for low-income people. Stephanie O'Neill of KFF Health News has more. The change marks the state's final step in opening up Medi-Cal to everyone who meets eligibility requirements regardless of their legal status. It's expected more than 700,000 immigrants ages 26 to 49 will now qualify for full health insurance. Immigrant advocates applaud the expansion. They point out that people without health insurance are generally sicker and die younger. Still, they expect a number of obstacles in their efforts to enroll some who are newly eligible. Among the biggest is convincing non-citizens that join Joining Medi-Cal is unlikely to affect their future immigration status. And advocates also note that California does not share enrollee information with federal immigration authorities. California's Department of Health Care Services is conducting an outreach campaign in 19 languages, including ads on radio, TV, and social media. I'm Stephanie O'Neill. Coming up, NASA wants to send your name into deep space. 
Support for LAist comes from Japan House Los Angeles, presenting Pokemon Meets Koge. This free exhibition showcases over 70 works by 20 celebrated Japanese craft artists. Playful images of Pikachu dyed onto silk cloth, a Charizard integrated into a ceramic jar, a dazzling Jolteon built up with lightning bolts made of hammered copper plated with gold and silver, and more. Experience the world of Pokemon through the ingenuity of Japanese artists working in traditional and contemporary crafts. More info at japanhousela.com. Support for this LAist podcast comes from the Soraya at Cal State Northridge and the Jazz at Naz Festival. Legendary trumpeter and Tijuana brass founder Herb Alpert and his wife, two-time Grammy winner Lonnie Hall, celebrate their golden anniversary, 50 years married, performing greatest hits from their solo careers, their latest work, and more on January 27th. Learn more at thesoraya.org. Back now to the L.A. report. NASA's Message in a Bottle campaign will send a spacecraft to Jupiter's icy moon of Europa. Lawrence Fokinay is a spokesperson for the Jet Propulsion Laboratory here in Pasadena, where technicians will add the names. This campaign gives people the opportunity to have their names etched on a microchip that will be attached to NASA's Europa Clipper spacecraft, which will travel over 1.8 billion miles to Jupiter, where it will study Jupiter's icy ocean moon named Europa. The deadline to add your name to the list is December 31st. You can sign up at nasa.gov slash message in a bottle. Orcas recently made a series of rare appearances in Southern California waters. While not exactly common, they can be spotted during their active season in the spring. So those are the sounds of orcas calling out to their pod. They come from acoustical oceanographer Vanessa Zobel from UCSD's Scripps Institution of Oceanography. She says orcas can be talkative, except when they're following migrating gray whales, because they hunt their young. Once they start eating the gray whales, then they will celebrate acoustically. You can hear them kind of like, like whistling around, which is pretty scary, but they are the top predators of the ocean. That's where orcas get their moniker of killer whales, but they're technically not classified as whales. But if you want to see killer whales or actual whales, including humpbacks and blue whales or dolphins, there are all kinds of marine mammals in our waters year-round, depending on migration patterns. We put together a mini guide on where you can hop on a boat and see some whales for yourself at laist.com. And it seems like a lot of those spots are open on Christmas Day. The Christmas season brings with it a lot of new movies to check out. The senior film editor for The Hollywood Reporter, Rebecca Keegan, says the list is impressive. Universal's animated movie Migration, Warner's musical adaptation of The Color Purple, the DC Comics sequel Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom. There's also an A24 sports drama, The Iron Claw. There's Michael Mann's racing drama, Ferrari. So a lot still to come by the end of the year. Rebecca says this year's box office earnings are approaching $9 billion, though earnings still have not returned to pre-pandemic levels. A Merry Christmas to everyone who celebrates from your friends at LA's. Thank you for listening to the LA Report. You can read more news at laist.com or listen live anytime on the LAist app or on the radio at 89.3 FM. The AM edition is hosted and produced by me, Suzanne Watley, with assistance from producer Tyler Wayne. Our engineer is Federico Garcia Rodriguez. Catherine Mailhouse is the director of content development. LAist's executive editor is Megan Garvey. Original music by Scott Kelly. Check back here at 4 for the PM edition. Listeners like you help make the LA Report possible. Please donate at laist.com slash join. And the L.A. Report is supported by Gordon and Donna Crawford, who believe quality journalism makes Southern California a better place to live. Imagine if you could charge your electric vehicle at the places you already love to eat, shop, and play. Whether you're at the movies, on your weekly grocery trip, or running errands at your local mall, Volta EV charging stations are built around your day-to-day and located in your community and nationwide. All you have to do is check in, plug in, and go about your day. It's EV charging made convenient. 
Download the Volta app to find your new favorite place to charge.